Hi, I'm Kat, and today's video is going to be my first book haul. With quarantine and everything, I've been buying quite a few books, as I know is the case with most of us readers. So I have some books to show you today, and there are quite a few, so let's get into it. So first off, I need to say that I have read, I think, maybe 50, maybe 70% of the books here today, so most of them I know what they are about, but some are a mystery. I have this terrible habit of buying books because of their covers or buying them knowing very, very little, so it's possible that I will show you a book and be like, I don't know what this is about, but I got it. I will be reading it. So let's get started. And let's get started with one of those because this is Outline by Rachel Cusk. I have seen it around Bookstagram quite a lot because, I mean, this is a beautiful cover and I have heard good things about it or read good things about it on Bookstagram. So I'm curious about this. I know this is the first book in a trilogy and reading a tiny bit of the blurb it is a novel in 10 conversations so that makes me believe that we will have probably one main character and it'll revolve around them then we have a fantasy and this is middle game by shannon mcguire stunning cover i mean this is so striking I love this and I obviously got this book because of Kayla from Books and Lala and she has been just raving about this book. I think this is one of her favorites of last year if I'm not mistaken and I mean I love fantasy. That being said I know nothing of what this book is about. I think we have a set of twins and then it's fantasy so I'm ready for this and for some reason this calls um, winter vibes to me. So I'm hoping to read it then. Then we have Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine Evaristo. And I mean, this book has been everywhere. This is one of those books that I don't really know much about. I think this is kind of a vignette style book. So we have a ton of different characters and we see through their perspectives. And I am guessing that the stories will be interconnected somehow. But it's set in Britain, it talks about the British experience, it talks about racism, and I've just, I've heard and read incredible reviews about this book, so I'm really, really curious. And it's one of those that I have a feeling that I'm going to love it, probably be a favorite. Then we have Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. I have talked about this book already on my channel. I have read it, I have really enjoyed it. And if you don't know what it is about, I will probably link all of the videos where I've mentioned the books I read before. So if you want to know like more in-depth thoughts, you can do so. So I'll leave them in the description down below. But a quick synopsis, this is about Amira who is a black young woman who is a babysitter for a white family and the starting point of this book is that she is with the kid that she babysits and they mistake her for an abductor they think that the white kid that she's babysitting uh, is being kidnapped and it's a whole thing and that is what starts off this book and it talks about racism it talks about microaggressions tokenism fake allyship, all of these very important topics. It is an incredible, incredible story, super quick read, and I understand that this is a book haul, so yeah, but I highly encourage you to pick up this book. It is amazing, I couldn't put it down. Very, very intriguing. And now we have this book, which intrigues me and scares me at the same time. This is The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. And this is one of quite a few books. I mean, I don't have that many here, but quite a few books that have been on my list of nonfiction. And I'm investing a lot on, in nonfiction this year. And this, just like the tagline says, mind, brain, and body in the transformation of trauma. So I have heard really incredible things about this book, the way that it explores trauma in humans and the way that it affects us. 
and I'm really really curious to read more about this topic I mean this is one of those like everybody has read this everybody has gained something from it so from what I've heard this is not an easy read but I'm curious about picking this up I have Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is another one that I have read. It's about two authors, two writers who have writer's block. So they are neighbors and they kind of make a pact of writing in the other person's style. So our main character, January, who is a writer of women's fiction and romance novels. And then we have Augustus, who writes literary fiction and just more serious stuff and not happy things. So they challenge each other to write outside their comfort zones and they strike up a relationship because it is a romance novel. On top of that, it deals with topics of grief, it deals with topics of love and acceptance and coming to terms with the fact that your parents are people as well. So it's it's much more than meets the eye. Then we have this book and this is the translated edition because I liked this cover so so much that I decided to get it in Portuguese but this is Feminist Theory from Margin to Center by Bell Hooks. This is another classic about feminism, about intersectional feminism and I'm just really really curious to read it and yeah I just I loved this edition so much it's so striking. Then we have a favorite of mine. This is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I said in my mid-year book freakout tag that I would be getting this book soon and I did and I've read it and it was amazing. It was beautiful. This is the story of two sisters who don't know the other one exists. They have the same father and the father pretty much just goes back and forth. One of them lives in New York with the father for the majority of the year, but then the other one lives in the Dominican Republic. And one day the father is going to the Dominican Republic to visit his daughter and the plane crashes, he dies, and that starts off the whole novel of the sisters finding out about each other, meeting for the first time, once again, topics of forgiveness, of family secrets, of love, of just amazingness, amazingness. This is written in verse. It's beautiful. Elizabeth Acevedo can do no wrong. If you haven't picked it up yet, highly encourage you to do so. This is Lenny by Max Porter. I have read his first novel, if I'm not mistaken, and it's up there somewhere and I really really enjoyed it it was very very striking and I'm curious about reading this one this is one of those that I don't really know what it is about I think it has a little bit of fairy tale inspirations I think Lanny is one of it's like a creature type of character don't really know what it is about and then we have uh, a little boy who's also a main character. I'm sorry, I don't really know. Like, this is a very weird book uh, in the way that it is um, organized. Let's put it that way. Like, it's it's out there. Next up, we have A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Rosanna Brown, which is another book I have already read, really, really enjoyed. This is fantasy and this is West African inspired. Quick synopsis, this has two main characters. We have Malik, who is a refugee, and then we have Karina, who is a princess. So Malik is trying to get into the capital of this um, world, let's put it like that. And Karina is a princess of said capital. And they start off completely uh, unknown to each other and then circumstances bring them together. Karina is dealing with the fact that her mother has just been murdered and trying to find kind of a solution for that. Malik is fighting to save one of his sisters and fighting to have a better life for himself 
and for his family and all of these things bring them together it is kind of enemies to lovers but it has so many twists to it and yeah a ton a ton of mythology if you enjoy things like greek and roman mythology you will absolutely love this because it has that level of complexity and i'm really really curious to get the second one i know this is a haul and i enjoyed this one so much but i'm already like waiting for the next one but this was a great read then we have another nonfiction, and this is you're not listening by kate murphy and this one i picked up completely on a whim from what i gather that this talks a lot about the way that we communicate with each other the way that we have conversations and that thing of you just waiting for your turn to speak and not really like taking in what people are telling you and i just i love not to argue per se like not have um arguments but i really enjoy discussion i really enjoy talking and thinking about things through and just debating i love debating this felt particularly interesting next up we have queenie by candice cardi williams and this book was great for some reason i had this in my head compared this to Bridget Jones maybe and something else like a bit more raw I don't remember where I saw that this focuses on our main character Queenie who is just fresh out of a breakup she's dealing with a lot emotionally mentally and this is her story of coming to terms with that coming to terms with loving herself with her self-worth and if you enjoy character driven stories this is the book for you it talks a lot about her mental health about her struggles it is really really good and i loved the writing style once again it was one of those that i flew through and i mean i cannot wait for the next book that kendi's puts out because i will be first in line really really enjoyed this then we have one of the most beautiful covers to ever grace the earth and that is The Color Purple by Alice Walker. I mean, just, ah, oh, beautiful artwork. It's a classic, so to be perfectly honest, do I know anything about it? No. I think maybe you teach this in school if you're American. Maybe I'm talking out of my ass. <laughs> I don't know. I know this is about two sisters and there's letters back and forth it talks about religion i also know that and then i i don't really know much about it i am really curious to pick this up and i hope i enjoy it because i mean i've read so many great reviews and i've heard so many good things about it that i'm just i'm excited to pick this up then we have lakewood by megan giddings and this is another book that I bought because of the cover but this is a mystery and it is very difficult to explain it without giving anything away in the blurb this is compared to Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro and Get Out, the movie from Jordan Peele and I would say that uh, it deals with human experiments and uh, scientific investigation type of scenario it talks a lot about what is ethical what is not it deals with racism and it's a very very interesting story I knew nothing going into it and I enjoy that approach so if you enjoy mystery and if you like just putting the pieces together this is that book for you then we have the Black Flamingo by Dean Adda and this is just an incredible book. This talks about Michael who is our main character who we follow from I think 5 years old to 20 years old so we see him go through a lot in his life him coming to terms with his identity, with his sexuality, the fact that he is biracial this book is his journey. It's a very very interesting read you fly through it and once again, can't wait for the next book that Dean Adda puts out because I really enjoyed this and I'm really, really curious to see where he goes next. 
Then we have The Pleasure by Maria Hesse, and this is an illustrated book that talks all about uh, the author's um, journey and experience with her sexuality. If you have seen the video where I talk more in depth about this book, you know that the writing was not my favorite, but the illustrations are really, really pretty. Then we have a favorite, which is Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. And this is an incredible book. I was so excited to get this in my hands and to read it because it's just like it should be mandatory reading. It's so good. And this is a ton of essays that talk about different subjects through the lens of intersectional feminism. So many important things were said in this book that I cannot recommend this enough. I loved it. And when I got it, I was so excited. <laughs> I just, it was a problem to not read it immediately, but when I got to it, it was amazing. I loved it. And it's just incredible, incredible. So pick this up. Then we have Expectation by Anna Hope. I got it because I have read a ton of different people say good things about it. I was just, I, I I bought it because of the cover, because I liked it so much. So for people out there in publishing houses and future designers or present designers, uh, never doubt the power of a good cover because, oh boy, are we shallow like that. <laughs> okay, so we have two main characters. I didn't know this. We have two main characters. One of them is in her first year of motherhood. Okay, and then we have another one who is in her 30s and wants to be an actress. So I'm guessing we will see like parallels of each woman's life and just analyze what it is to be a woman in your 30s and a mother in this case. Oh, I did not know this. <laughs> okay, well, that's that. Next up, we have Cradle to Cradle by Michael Braungart and William McDonough. McDonough? I'm not sure. Uh, this was another book that I picked up on a whim. This is another nonfiction. This just grabbed my attention because I am a designer. So for some reason, this called to me and I have already read it and I enjoyed it a lot. I learned a lot from it. And this talks about the world of industry and design. This was very, very interesting. I will talk about this more in my wrap up. Out of Love by Hazel Hayes. And this I have also read recently. And this is a book that talks about a breakup. So we have our two main characters, and this is a very interesting setup in the way that the story is told because it's not told chronologically. You start at the present time where the characters have broken up and are separated, and you go back, each chapter you go back in time, and you see them like where things, when things were good, and you see them meeting for the first time so you get to the end of this book and they have just met. It talks a lot about how two people can be good for each other at one time but eventually walk very different paths. It talks a lot about mental health, about trauma and how that impacts your life even if you don't realize it and it was very, very interesting. I have never done a book haul, so I don't know if I'm doing a good job, especially because so many of these books I have already read and enjoyed. So I feel like the books I haven't read, I'm showing it to you. I'm showing them to you, and it's like, I don't know what this is about, but hey, I bought it. And then the other ones, is like I'm doing a review. So I don't know if I'm doing a good job, but... I hope I am. Let's keep going. Then we have Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. And Jacqueline Woodson is another one of those names that is just super well known. I have heard amazing things about this. From what I've heard, this talks a lot about family dynamics. And it is very short, but it packs a punch from what I have heard. 
it talks each chapter talks about a different character but you really feel them as people and i just can't wait to get to this then we have losing eden by lucy jones and this is another book that i have already read and it's just this is the book that i read first in terms of nonfiction, which this also is and this was the thing that started my interest and my love in exploring other nonfiction. So this focuses on why nature is important to humans, how our current mindsets are pulling us apart from nature because more and more we just we don't spend time in nature, we don't see nature as often because we live in cities and that is affecting us in the worst possible way. It is affecting our physical health, our mental health, it is affecting our our happiness, our livelihood, and this book was just so important in the time that I read it. This has inspired me to just pick up gardening more and more, so I've planted tomatoes, I've planted broccoli, I've planted lettuces, and I'm just really excited and really inspired to just be more in tune with nature and like enjoy it more because we are so sheltered in a way like it's almost like we've we've become afraid of nature and this book is just it tells you facts on why you need nature in order to live a happier and a healthier life and I just, I would love everybody to read this. And I loved this book so, so much. And I'm really, really happy that I, I picked it up. So pick it up as well. I highly recommend that you do. Then we have my current read or one of my current reads. And this is All Adults Here by Emma Straub. I think that's how you say her name. And once again, I've seen this all over Bookstagram because this cover is beautiful and people love beautiful covers. And once again, this is a family story. From what I gather from the synopsis and from what I've read in terms of reviews, this talks a lot about family dynamics, about different people coming to terms with other people. I always love to see family dynamics explored in literature. It is set in a small town, so if you enjoy that, this is it. And I'm really, really curious. I don't know what I'm going to get myself into, but I'm curious. And right off the bat, the first chapter was so striking. <laughs> I was just, I, I finished the first chapter, I was like, is that how you're going to start? That's a choice. So very, very interesting. Next up, we have one of my favorite covers. It's just, it's so beautiful. This is Kanja Women by Afia Takra and I'm just, I'm so in love with this cover. And this is kind of historical fiction. And once again, this deals with not family as a whole dynamics, but it deals with mother, daughter, uh, dynamics and relationship. I have heard amazing things about this book. The writing style supposedly is beautiful. This is set in the South, like American South, before and after the Civil War. And we have a mother and a daughter and the mother is kind of a healer. She has, I don't know if she has powers. I think we have some sort of magical realism situation here. I don't really know too much about this but I'm really, really curious to find out and to read it. And obviously once I do, I will report back. And then I have left the best for last because <laughs> we have my two favorite books to talk about one at a time because each one deserves its time to shine. So first off, we have Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert and it's a favorite book, so obviously I have read it. Once it got to me, I think I read it almost immediately. And this is a romance novel, and it's beautiful. We have our main character, Chloe Brown. She is chronically ill, she has chronic pain, and she has a near-death experience that leads her to reevaluate her life 
and not being happy with where she was at, she decided to change some things. She made a list of things that she wanted to do and all of those led her to Redford Morgan, who is our other main character. And this is just the best romance novel of two characters coming together in a relationship. It's so, so beautiful. And it has so many of the things that I love. It doesn't have a ton of tropes. It is super well written, like you won't be able to put it down. Then we have um, a super healthy relationship. We have super healthy communication, like these people think things through, they analyze themselves, they analyze each other, it's wonderful. And it has another thing that I forgot to mention in my previous video, and that is the fact that this is dual POV. So we see things from Chloe's perspective, but we also see things from Redford's perspective. And I love that. I love romance novels where we see both perspectives and we see where each character is coming from because just getting one perspective sometimes is lacking and you feel like we're jumping into conclusions and I just love to see everything. It's just it's so beautiful, it's so perfect. And I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. It's perfection. Go pick it up. I have, this is no longer a haul. This is a recommendation. <laughs> Go pick up this book. It's beautiful. I loved it. And finally, we have Take a Hint, Danny Brown. And these books are part of, I think, a trilogy. I don't know if there'll be more, but each book focuses on a different sister, the Brown sisters. And this book is just as incredible. It deals with different things. These characters are in different stages of their lives and they have like different personalities, different hang-ups, but it's just, they're both so amazing and I just, both favorites. I think I connected more with this one, but I just, I love them both. So in Take a Hint, Danny Brown, we have also dual POV. We have our main character, Danny, and she is very much afraid of relationships. She doesn't want anything serious. She's just looking for flings, everything casual, only physical. And then we have our other main character who is Zafir. And Zafir is just the perfect, the perfect pairing for Danny and the perfect counterpart for Danny because while Danny is very much afraid of relationships, Zafir is super in touch with his feelings. He loves reading romance novels, which is just the cutest thing. And like, contrary to Danny, he's very much looking for a relationship and for his happy ending. And it's just, it's so beautiful to see where each of these characters are coming from and see them come together. And it's just so perfect. This is Friends to Lovers and it has a bit of a fake relationship trope. Though I would say that if you don't enjoy fake relationship, still give this one a try because it works so well in the context of this book. I love this book so much. I can talk about this book forever and ever and ever, and if you haven't picked this up yet, please do so because it's just so cute. And yeah, that's our video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. And if so, which one do I need to pick up immediately because I'd love to know. And that's it for today. I'll see you next time. Bye!